We start the film with nurse Anna Clark passive aggressively telling her boss that she's worked well past the end of her shift, only for him to ignore her emotions and make her find more information on a patient with a bite on his hand. After sneakily passing the job off to someone else though, Anna goes home, where she finds her lazy ass husband Lewis lying in bed with his shoes still on because he doesn't have the diligence to take them off himself and has instead been waiting for Anna to do it for him. Some people don't deserve happiness. An important news report then broadcasts on the television, but the couple are too busy slipping on semen in the shower to notice it before going to bed with no information about the oncoming danger. In the morning, Lewis wakes up and sees a familiar child reveal the couple's poor caution as she walks into their house without having to break down any locked doors. Noticing blood on her face, Lewis approaches the girl, but unfortunately presents his neck like a waiter to a food critic, allowing the girl to grab a bite. Yummy. Anna, though, shows some strong urgency and throws the zombie outside before locking the door and tending to Lewis's wound, where she demonstrates some medical knowledge as she attempts to stop the bleeding, only for Lewis to die anyway while she fails to contact emergency services. Lewis then rises and lunges at Anna, who not only displays effective evasive tactics, but also incredible mindfulness, grabbing the car keys as she runs away and hides in the bathroom. She really swerved around a fast zombie while thinking ahead enough to grab the car keys before escaping. Very promising. Unfortunately though, she puts her head near the door and calls for Lewis, Lewis, who pretends to be Jack Torrance but forgets his iconic line, so Anna climbs out of the window and kicks Lewis when he grabs her foot. When she gets to her car, her neighbor tells her to get back even though she's already like 40 feet away and he's approaching her. Oh, his right eye is messed up. Guess his depth perception doesn't work. An ambulance then hits the goofy ass man and Anna drives away, showing decent selfishness by not stopping when a woman asks for help. Eventually, another man tries to pull a GTA maneuver by stealing her car, but she pulls away from him, only to show poor driving skills as she veers off the road and crashes into a tree. After a brief montage where supposed but clearly incompetent experts seem to have no idea how this infection spreads despite every single victim of it having some sort of bite mark, Anna crawls out of her total car, only for Kenneth the cop to meet her with a shotgun to the face, where Anna demonstrates some good composure by not reacting and instead saying the magic word. Please. The pair then begin walking until someone shoots at but misses Kenneth, forcing Kenneth to point his gun at a new trio, where one of them, Michael, displays his mediation ability by managing to get everyone to lower their weapons and begin heading to the nearby mall. Once inside, Michael displays good caution and leadership by telling the others that he and Andre will check the nearby area and lock the doors while the others stay by the entrance. As Michael searches one of the stores though, he encounters a zombie, but displays his strength and resolve as he manages to fend it off long enough to grab a weapon and kill it. Elsewhere, Andre also secures the area, but as he checks the doors, a zombie jumps out the window, so Andre reveals strong readiness, composure, and awareness by aiming at the zombie without shooting it, keeping the glass intact. Back at the entrance, another zombie attacks the trio who stayed behind, leading to a wrestling match with Kenneth, so Anna reveals her autonomy when she grabs the shotgun Kenneth dropped and shoots the zombie. Can't always rely on other people to save you. Good job. When Michael and Andre return, the group runs to the elevators, with Andre's pregnant wife Luda pulling down her sleeve to cover her arm. Oh, brother. When they reach the next floor, the doors open and reveal a trio of security guards who point their guns at the group and tell them to leave. Fortunately though, Anna demonstrates a mediation ability as well and convinces them to let the group stay if they hand over their guns. Once again displaying his own skill in mediation as well as his focus on preparation, Michael approaches the lead security guard CJ and tells him that they should write SOS signs on the roof so oncoming helicopters will know where they are. That's definitely not gonna work, but still good preparation. As everyone stands on the roof, they see a truck recklessly driving towards the mall, and while CJ displays selfishness by arguing against helping the people get inside, Anna displays the opposite, leading to CJ and his biggest supporter Bart pointing their guns at Anna and the others. Michael and Kenneth, however, showcase their melee skills and wrestle the guns away from the guards before taking the guards inside and locking them in a room. When the people from the truck enter the mall, we see an old woman with a massive bite on her arm and who looks like a victim of an extraterrestrial virus, but Anna displays poor deduction and doesn't realize that her husband turned into a zombie as a result of being bitten, causing her to treat this woman like any other injured person. Like, come on, she's obviously gonna turn into a zombie. Meanwhile, Michael meets some of the other survivors and congratulates a woman named Norma for helping bring some of them here, but a man named Steve shows his assholery when he calls them out. When you two fellas are done blowing each other, maybe Davy Crockett can tell us the deal here. What did you just call me? Hoping to find his brother at Fort Pastor, Kenneth looks to use the new survivor's truck to go there despite people telling him that the fort has been overrun, even revealing his poor sociability when Michael asks him to stay and help the people in the mall. Fuck y'all. When he gets outside though, he stops and sees Andy, the owner of Andy's store, who knows how to play chess from across the street, so Kenneth decides not to go to Fort Pastor. 
Elsewhere, as Anna tends to a bite on a man's hand, completely unsuspecting of its growing danger, the dying woman finally dies and Anna's careless ass puts her own head right next to the soon to be zombie's open mouth, but luckily steps away before the corpse rises from the bed and runs towards it. Anna though displays some resourcefulness and accuracy as she stabs the zombie in the head with a nearby poker. A bit later, Anna finally reveals the minimum level of deduction she should have shown at the beginning of the film, unconfidently telling the others what turns people into zombies. I think it's the bites. You think. As the others contemplate who else in the mall has been bitten. So who else in the group is bitten? Uh-oh. Andre's suspicious ass suspiciously sneaks away with a suspicious look on his suspicious face. You gotta watch him. The others, though, don't seem to notice Andre's suspicious actions, with Michael instead displaying some ruthlessness and caution by saying that they need to kill Frank, the person they know has been bitten, in order to keep the group safe. When Michael goes to kill Frank, however, Frank and his daughter Nicole give this whole speech about all their dead family members like that's supposed to change the fact that this man gotta die. Anna, however, again displays her passive aggressiveness and sardonically tells Michael to kill him anyway, even telling him to kill some random other dude too while he's at it. Kill Tucker too. Wait a minute. I was never bit. We can't be sure. None of Anna's tactics work though, as Frank has already started looking more and more like Skeletor just over the course of the conversation, so Kenneth shows his ruthlessness as he takes him out back and puts him down with the shotgun. Over the next few days, the group begins to get comfortable, which happens to include target practice on zombified celebrity doppelgangers. Suddenly though, the power goes out, so Michael takes CJ and Bart from their cell and tells them to lead him to the generator. CJ though displays strong caution by only agreeing to do so with a gun, but ultimately falls victim to Michael's even stronger caution when he only gives him an axe instead of giving a gun to someone who had pointed one at him earlier. Kenneth then appears for additional backup and demonstrates his experience by turning off the safety on Michael's gun. As the group explores the parking garage, they find a dog, which turns out to be a herald for a zombie that can climb across ceiling pipes before biting Bart. A horde of zombies then begins running after them, so the group enters a gated area and then sets them on fire. Meanwhile, Andre has been up to no good in this nasty ass green room, where he's sneakily helping his zombified wife give birth, revealing his poor caution as he makes sure to kiss her wet ass, infected ass lips. You know she's a zombie, right? Fortunately for him though, he showed good preparation by tying her to the bed, so when she starts trying to attack him, she won't be able to move much. He then manages to take the baby out, but Norma comes in and sees the ludicrous situation, so she pulls out her gun and shoots the zombified Luda, showing poor emotional awareness as she doesn't consider the unstable way a man who tied up a zombie will react to her killing what he still looks at as his wife. Yeah, I would just walk away. He's clearly unhinged. After Norma shoots Luda, Andre shoots Norma, so Norma shoots Andre, killing the man who thought till death do us part doesn't include the undead, and leaving the dubious dad with a duplicitous death in C2. Hearing the gunshots, the rest of the group rush into the room, with Anna displaying poor caution as she stays very close to the recently deceased Norma because she thinks that only a bite can turn people into zombies rather than any kind of death. Since Norma doesn't turn though, they check on the baby, who has something on her face, so Anna shoots it off. A bit later, after having had enough of this mall, the group plans to start reinforcing some parking shuttles so they can drive through the surrounding horde of zombies and reach Steve's boat before sailing to a nearby island so they won't have an increasing number of enemies to incessantly fight off. You win, CJ? I'm in. Nice. Hoping to bring along Andy as well, but knowing he's had nothing but guns to eat and not wanting his starving ass to slow down the group, Kenneth shows some strong ingenuity as he comes up with an idea to bring him food through the horde of zombies between him and the mall. A bit later, the group lowers the dog, Chips, with some food on his back into the horde of zombies, and he walks over to Andy's store, but when Andy opens the door, he takes too long to close it and the zombies start piling in. Andy though manages to stop the zombies, but only after getting bitten. Oh brother. Showing extreme recklessness, Nicole drives a truck to Andy's store to get chips. Wait, I thought he didn't have any food. And the now zombified Andy decides to reveal his artistry by wiping some blood across a board and presenting it to the group at the mall. Andy then starts heading towards Nicole, and while Kenneth tells Michael to tell Nicole to leave now, Michael's goofy ass just keeps saying, listen to me. Listen to me. Man, if you don't just say what you gotta say. 
Several survivors then prepare to rescue Nicole, but Steve shows strong selfishness and self-preservation by deciding to stay behind and keep the fire door open for when the others return, with Michael making sure to double down on Steve's selfishness. Don't fuck this up. After walking through the sewer, the group reaches Nicole, and CJ displays some resourcefulness and ingenuity when he blows up a gas tank to clear the path of zombies. As they make their way back through the sewer, CJ shows some mercy when he shoots one of the survivors who started getting eaten by zombies. Unfortunately though, when they make it back to the fire door, Steve's selfish ass is gone and the group can't get back inside the mall. Until Anna arrives and opens the door. Hooray! With the area overrun, the entire mall squad then gets into the elevator and heads towards the buses, after which they break outside and find themselves surrounded by zombies, so CJ throws another gas tank and clears the area ahead of them. Nice. Sadly though, Kenneth's poor driving ass turns way too quickly while one of the survivors inside messes with a chainsaw, causing him to cut apart someone else before turning even harder and flipping the whole bus over. Come on now, dog. Refusing to help any survivors, Steve gets out of the bus, but gets ambushed by a zombie from above that kills him. Ah! Let's talk about it. Steve is an asshole. Nearly every line his useless lips utter in this film confirm his unlikability. While he does admittedly have strong self-preservation, avoiding potentially dangerous situations to maintain the highest chances of extending his worthless life, the nearly unparalleled levels of disgust his selfish actions evoke from not only the audience but the other survivors as well make him a terrible teammate, one that only the most selfless would entertain for long. Yes, selfishness can be good, but if you're forfeiting all human relationships for it, then it's probably not worth it. No one's gonna wanna keep you around. Steve's self-interest simply goes too far and makes the survival of his teammates, and therefore himself as well, less likely. Most critically though, he doesn't have the requisite skill set, things like preparation, survival experience, and tenacity to operate autonomously, as opposed to a character like Aaron from Your Next, who did demonstrate several qualities that made her less reliant on others and would allow her to act selfishly if she desired. Overall, Steve's only potentially positive trait, his selfishness, ultimately ends up harming him more than it helps him, perhaps even leading to his own teammates wanting to kill him. Do me a favor, blow my fucking head off. Oh yeah, you can count on that. Fucker! Leaving the bitchy businessman with a beautiful boat in detail. The remaining survivors then get into the other bus, with Anna not only displaying strong agility by evading some zombies, but also some strong mindfulness and riskiness by grabbing the keys from Steve's body so they will actually have a way to use the boat when they arrive at the dock. Unfortunately though, Michael gets bitten as he pulls Anna onto the bus, with his nearly sleeveless shirt doing basically nothing to protect him from human teeth, unlike Leatherwood, which I imagine a fucking mole would have in its abundance of stores. Why don't people ever wear leather in zombies? The group then arrives at the dock, but CJ ends up getting stuck on the bus when the front door jams and zombies begin rushing through the back. With nowhere to go, he sacrifices himself with another gas tank, momentarily freeing the dock of zombies and allowing the others to escape. Cool. Let's talk about CJ. CJ evolves throughout the film, going from a selfish security guard who points his gun at pregnant people to a man willing to go through a horde of zombies to rescue a girl he just met. With regards to his more notable positive qualities, he also displays a lot of overall competence, staying composed under pressure, consistently getting headshots, and enacting useful ideas that help the group get through some sticky situations. All in all, CJ doesn't demonstrate anything especially impressive, but his lack of any defining negatives, as well as his versatility, leave the selfish security guard turned selfless survivor in B2. As the other survivors board the boat and head to the island, Michael reveals his bite and stays behind. Until he blows his brains out. Damn. Time. Wait. There's more. Damn, did they all die? Well, now it's time to rank. First off, we have Michael, the TV salesman who constantly thinks ahead. His strong caution and proactiveness allow him to minimize the danger in various situations, working to identify potential harm and then neutralize it, sometimes even making use of his unexpected ruthlessness to do so. He also displays notable leadership skill, becoming the group's de facto man in charge for much of what happens in the mall, though not everyone listens to him. I'm not following anyone. Overall, Michael's skill set mostly revolves around leadership, with a bit of combat ability as well, making him suitable for horror scenarios that involve other people, such as The Mist or other zombie movies. I have less confidence in his ability to succeed on his own, but not so much to make him a low-tier survivor. 
leaving the savvy salesman with a simple skill set in eight. Next is Kenneth, the cop who doesn't know what fun means. Kenneth may have even stronger caution than Michael, certainly displaying it with more hostility as he often places his gun between himself and any danger he might face. His first instinct of killing a potential threat bodes well for him in other horror movies, especially those where characters die due to underestimating the hostility of the creatures or people around them. I'm looking at you, Prometheus. Not only does Kenneth display strong caution in combat though, he also demonstrates some impressive ingenuity, developing a clever plan to use a dog to deliver food after noticing the zombies didn't attack it earlier. Unfortunately, however, he shows poor driving ability, trying so hard to shake off a zombie from the bus that he ends up tipping the entire vehicle over. All in all, Kenneth works well as a mostly solitary figure, one who doesn't exude the most sociable personality, but does still manage to operate within the team leaving the killer cop with a cold-hearted complex in a two. Finally, we have Anna, the healthcare worker who started killing the unhealthy people. As the main character, Anna has the opportunity to showcase the widest array of attributes, and more often than not, does so positively. Possibly benefiting her in other intense horror movies, she showcases quick thinking under pressure, both outmaneuvering her enemy well and preparing for the future, twice managing to take the keys that she likely would not have had the opportunity to later, each time validated by the urgency of the moment and necessity for the future. Of course, her medical knowledge would benefit her and any potential allies as well, possibly causing others to prioritize her life, which could prove important in group situations. Anna does, however, display some pretty slow deduction, taking far too long to ascertain the significance of the bites despite seeing one firsthand at the beginning of the film. Overall though, Anna had a strong performance with good versatility, leaving the nimble nurse in a necrotic nightmare in a But that's it. The average ranking for this cast was B tier. A pretty good collection of characters. Despite being a remake, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead still manages to be one of the most memorable horror movies of the 2000s, especially with that mid credits footage. <laughs> Thanks for watching.